with Dr. Manhattan was, was this is with Deku was Dr. Manhattan or had Dr. Manhattan's powers. And now, guys, basically, last time in the comments, some of you guys, one of you guys in particular, asked to nerf Deku. But one of the other guys said, no, just keep Deku how he is. Now, Deku was kind of OP, but the only thing drawing him is his humanity. Now, and later on, if you guys want me to nerf Deku a lot, a little bit more, kind of make him on the level of some sort of other, like, I don't know, make him on the level of, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I'll just, I'll just keep Deku as he is, and maybe be, and maybe have Deku able to control, feel pain. To make him just a little bit more nerfed. Because I'm thinking the only thing I can do right now to nerf him. Without any more, you know, ideas. I'm probably just going to nerf him so he can feel pain. So let's get started. Now basically, Deku has all his powers. Omnipresent. Can able can control reality. Also the other stuff. And matter. And stuff like that. So basically, Deku goes to school. Or teleports to the front gate. Like in canon, basically walking in school, and not 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 like in canon, just teleports to the front door. Pretty much walking into school the second day of school. Deku walks in there, and basically that night, that day, Deku walks in and Chaku looks at him. Also, with Chaku, and says, "Hey, pretty much Chaku started to say so last night. Sorry I didn't call you, but I had some trouble with my parents." And pretty much Deku says it's no problem. Deku already knowing what Ochaku is doing because he's omnipresent. So Deku teleports to his chair. And basically everybody starts to trying to talk to Deku. And yeah, your quirk is amazing. But Deku says it's not a quirk. It's an accident that gave me superpowers. Or an artificial quirk for that matter. I don't, I'm not tied to the human flaws or human desires you guys have. Basically, Deku says, only thing that keeps into my humanity is my humanity, my saneness, and my ability to have children. So, technically, I don't really have to deal with human flaws like going to the bathroom, or eating, drinking, or even feeling pain for that matter. Pretty much, Bakugo smack, smacks Deku in the back of the neck, and Deku is shocked that he felt a little bit of a pain or a twitch. Deku gets up and says, What did you do to me? Pretty much grabbing Bakugo by the throat. Bakugo says, uh, I'm so sorry. And Deku blows him up. Everybody is straight up confused AF. And they say, You just killed him for no reason. And Deku reconstructs Bakugo, bringing him back to life. Bakugo gasps for air, falling to the ground, saying, What was that for? Pretty much him coughing up some blood or some access to breathe that. Deku merged with his stomach when he brought him back. Pretty much Deku says, sorry, I thought you did something to me. I never felt pain since I got the accident. Basically, Ajaku says, are you okay? Pretty much grabbing Deku by the shoulder. In that instance, Deku feels something for once. Deku feels a human touch like any other person would. Deku's confused because normally when Deku when Deku's getting touched, it feels like an outside source or a different type of, basically, energy touches him. Like a weaker, lesser. But when Deku, when Nochaku touches Deku, it feels like some sort of love. But Deku says, I'm okay. Pretty much scooting away from Nochaku just a little bit. Pretty much sitting back into his chair. So when Ocha when Azawa walks into the class they start they start class that could getting you know full-on a's plus a's a's plus pretty much just getting good grades all together because he's omnipresent and he can never really miss a question so when all might walks into the class Deku tells Dinky to get your camera out Dinky's saying why and Deku saying just trust me Deku looking pointing towards the door and all might walking inside the door pretty much saying I am here Dinky says, how do you know that? And Deku says, I'm omnipresent. Dinky says, okay. Pretty much not believing Deku, but just thinking Deku had some sort of future scene quirk. And technically he does, but not really a quirk, it's a power. Deku, Dr. Manhattan can see into the future and the past. So, yeah, so basically, 
Document had and looks at all my and all my says day is combat training and all of you will be ready and start to go in combat training. Everybody get their hero costumes on and get started. Now Deku's hero costume is basically just going to be uh you know bl a black a um, black what was it? A black I think it was a black no that's a, a Leotard, I think. It was a, I think that was a Leotard. Just a black black um what was it? unders. Basically, it's just gonna be the same outfit as this. It's just gonna look like this, but it's with you know, his glowing, iconic, green hair, but blue. So Deku gets ready, and basically gets into his black leotard or whatever it is, and Deku says, "I'm ready." Everybody says that's way too you know. Opened and like it's barely a costume. It's just your undies. Pretty much, Deku is saying these are undies that are bulletproof, fireproof, and can withstand the pressure of the thousand, a pressure of the sun. So I'm pretty sure they're more than just underwear. So basically, Deku says, "Well, the rest of your body is pretty cool, and plus, mm, you're kind of a power. You're kind of a power like." Cosmic being in yourself, so pretty sure you wearing clothes isn't really part of your big cosmic thing, anyways, right? Pretty much, on the pretty much, Deku says, Uh huh. Well, teleporting in the front of the class, looking at All Might, saying, What are we gonna do? All Might says, We're doing combat train, and you're gonna team up with your partner. Pretty much, Deku making the cards change, making him be teamed up with Ochaku, but Deku knowing that already he's going to be teamed up with Ochaku. But him switching up the teams with Ida actually being teamed up with mm, what was it? Sorry, um Ida will be teamed up with somebody else with Bakuku will be teamed up with Todoroki. Now let's get started. Now basically, Ida's fight since he's gonna be teamed up with somebody else, and Todoroki's gonna be switched with Ida. Now if Todoroki's team did lose, they're just gonna lose again. So yeah. So basically, Deku walks in, looking around, telling Ojaku to go upstairs and try to do whatever you can to Ida. Deku knowing that Ojaku's not gonna succeed. Deku walks off, looking around. Pretty much started to levitate a little bit forwards. And Deku gets hit with the explosion. Deku gets pushed back a little bit. He can, like, way confused why Deku's still in pain all of a sudden. When Deku gets blown with another explosion, Deku dodges it by throwing a literal godlike punch towards Bakugo, sending Bakugo flying through two walls. Bakugo gets back up, and Deku's confused how Bakugo can withstand that much blows. Deku teleports in front of Bakugo and body slams him in the ground again and again and again before pretty much the floor breaks down in three three times, basically Bakugo being at the front floor, him being knocked out cold. Now Deku flies through the walls all the way up to the bomb room where Ida is, and Chaku is basically levitating the whole room and rubble around the room, but Ida's running around with the bomb in his hands. And Deku he uses a little bit of his power to pretty much iconically try to run after Ida. Him using some super speed to run behind Ida, seeing that he's Ida's like incredibly slow. Deku grabs a bomb out of Ida's hands before Ida can even react. And like Deku's like already touched the bomb for like about an hour, but in real time it's been like a minute second. So basically for Deku to use a super speed is like him literally every conversation with anybody when he uses super speed is like hours on end. Every word, not a conversation, I mean like every word. Like even a word has dog in it lasts for like thirty minutes when Deku uses a super speed or his time slowing down powers. So basically Deku Deku takes the bomb from Ida's hands and pretty much resets time or less time flow. Normally, after him de deactivating his super speed, basically Ida falling down to the ground so his deck could kind of tripped him. Pretty much, Ida f pretty much makes a dent or a crater in the wall, him getting knocked out, 
and them winning, your team wins, the home team loses. Now, everybody's super confused what happened because they just saw a blue blur go after Ida, and then out of, out of nowhere, the bomb was in the blue blur's hand, and the blue blur appeared to be Deku. So, basically, in the frames, Deku just disappeared, a blue blur after Ida, and then Ida was on the ground, and, like, seconds and Deku was at the same spot he ran off or apparently the blue blur had the bomb in his hands like nothing happened so Deku put the bomb down and said well that was fun I guess teleporting outside the teleporting outside the pretty much place along with Ochaku Ochaku bars up saying I'm not really used to that and Deku saying hmm huh you're not used to it oh Maybe you should start getting used to it, as if I teleport you more and more. Basically, all I says that was amazing. I never saw somebody with so much strength and talent. You, you may become the best hero in the world, young Midoriya. And Deku says, uh huh. Well, that's what you to say. I just want you to know that I'm gonna become the god of this world. I'm gonna make humanity better than it is now, and make the world become more and more thriving and beautiful. Pretty much all I'm saying, okay, young Gloria? Pretty much that who's saying, you're not going to be number one hero for long. You better train and cut off like the ties, you know. I might be kind of confused, but that who's seeing into the future when all for one, pretty much, forced All Might to use all of his love to power. Now, All Might actually gave one for all to Mirio. The same day, pretty much Deku got one for all in canon. So, pretty much Deku teleports back to his house after school. And just like he gets a, a doorbell ring at the front door. Looking through the walls, seeing it's Ochaku. Deku opens the door and Ochaku runs up there and hugs Deku saying, I just didn't want to call you. I don't want to come here. They pretty much ask you something. Deku says, yes. We're about to read Ochaku's mind, but Ochaku says that out loud, saying, do you want to date me? Deku's saying, yes. Hesitantly, but it doesn't really matter, because Deku's just going to outlive every human on this planet anyways. So Deku says, yes. So, Bruce Ochaku says, okay, pretty much hugging Deku. Now we're going to leave it off here, guys. I know this video is kind of short, and I hope you guys will like part three because part three will be a lot more longer. Now, right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And as always, guys, have a blessed day. Bye.